This conference will now be recorded. Thank you, Cindy. I'll start over. Um, this is the regular November meeting of the Heritage Preservation Commission of the City of St. Peter. It is Tuesday, November 24th, 2020, and I say now 5.32 p.m. I'll call the meeting to order, and I will note that we do have a quorum present um, with members Oviat, Bruflat, Metzen uh, joining on, on the video, and members Latinsky, Bergman, and Potts uh, participating on the phone in. Um, we also have with us Jill Haas from Freebird, and uh, as well as Olita, um, and then of course Cindy is is administering the meeting back in the office. So welcome everybody. Um, the I will note that this is an electronic format on the Go to Meeting platform. Um, I will ask is uh, a, for approval of the agenda. I so move. We have a motion by Latinsky. Is there a second? Emily will second. And a second by Bruflot. I will just say all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have an agenda approved. Um, you have the minutes from the November 4, 2020 special meeting uh, in the packet. Would there be a motion to approve or amend? So moved. I so move. I'm going to go with a motion by Metzen and a second by Latinsky. Any further comments on the minutes? All in favor of the minutes as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none. Um, we're assembled tonight to consider business that was tabled from that special meeting uh, on November 4th. Um, and uh, namely, you're to consider the the uh, the awning that Ms. Haas has proposed to install on the 213 South Minnesota Avenue building. That would be the uh, former Fair Emporium building, um, and it's the one that has the metal frame that's still uh, still up at this time. But but the, cav the canvas fabric um, that advertised the Fair Emporium has been removed. Um, it had been Jill's intent to uh, construct an awning. Uh, her father would actually do it, and um, our orders were not to have contact. So I, I've got the rendering and you've got it in the in the packet but it is quite crafty it it, it shows craftsmanship and, and certainly some skill um the the proposal would be to install the awning the full width of the frame that, that currently exists um it would be a cedar shake or not cedar shake a cedar slat awning um you'll recall the previous awning on that building had been cedar shake shingles um, which which were uh, uh, used in in, in, uh, in previous renovations of the building um, that had been removed um, and then when the Stelters opened the Fair Emporium they established then the canvas uh, awning on the frame that exists today um, at the last meeting um, in the absence of Ms. Haas and, and some questions the matter was tabled for consideration tonight um, I, I I will tell you that that I, I I've been torn on this and and I've been conflicted and and um, when 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 that is the case I often reach out and discuss things with with uh, um, either a colleague or Mr. Prafke and and the suggestion was that Ross if you're if, if you're a little bit conflicted or confused why don't you call the state historic architect so I made a call to Natasha Weimer who is the state historic architect uh, at the state historic preservation office in St. Paul. Uh, she replaced Charlie Nelson, who was a great guy about 10 years ago and has held that position since. Um, so I wanted to consult with her as, as to her thoughts on the appropriateness or inappropriateness of, of the proposed awning. Uh, and uh, she went on Google Earth, so she had a street view of the building. Um, it still had the awning from the Fair Emporium on it. Um, and uh, I suggested that the proposal was to put a cedar slat awning on the building um, and I offered then that I would send her the pictures and she said, Ross, don't bother. Um, she said it was her opinion that a wood awning, um, whether it's cedar, pine or anything else, would be a wholly inappropriate application given that there's no historic use of those materials. They're not uh, uh, commonly used or, or, or used in, in uh, uh, historic district, districts where there's trying to be some semblance of an era. And in our case, it's generally the turn of the last century. Um, so uh, I unfortunately, and, and with, with regret, I'm gonna have to recommend that, that you deny Ms. Haas's um, 
request to to use the cedar shake awning and i and i uh, communicated that yesterday with jill and i did give her the opportunity if she wanted to withdraw and seek a, a canvas awning which miss weimer said was the appropriate application or even no awning um, that, that we would cancel tonight's meeting. But Jill did want to attend and she did want to have an opportunity to advocate on her behalf, which is only fair. I'm so glad she could join us. We had a little snafu, who, her and I, on trying to get the right login, uh, but just the two of us, evidently. Um, so um, I'm gonna open it up and let Jill address you folks. Um, and then we'll go around uh, individually with the members and ask for comments, questions, okay? Jill, go ahead, turn your mic on and you can have the floor. Hi everybody, um, I'm Jill Haas. I'm actually the owner of Ovita and Freebird. So if you've had a chance to get to either of those stores, um, I'm the person behind that as well as my daughter who you'll see in there quite often as well. But um, mostly tonight, I actually get to introduce myself and then just get to meet each of you too. Because you know, you hear about this board as a business owner, but we don't know any of you. I didn't know any of you before previously. And so I just wanted to, start to build that relationship with all of you so that that way I could understand more of what you guys do and your goals as far as this committee. And then you could also maybe understand mine from a business owner's perspective as well. Um, so that was one of my major goals, even more so than the awning itself, to be honest with you, um, because I just don't have a complete understanding. So um, that is kind of where I'm coming from tonight, but I would be more than happy to answer questions as far as the awning. Um, I just need to start by saying that I have absolute respect for keeping the historic integrity of our town. That I think is important, absolutely. I also think that it's important to keep an open mind as far as creativity, adding potential extra beauty that maybe wasn't from then, but could potentially add some newer updated beauty, but still keep the feel that we want in our town. So that's kind of the perspective that I'm coming from because I always love to think out of the box and how can we stay with guidelines and stay on course, but yet maybe give a new, um, new twist to things. So that's kind of where I'm coming from and why I thought of the wooden awning. Um, I guess for me, when I look around town and I see, you know, bright yellow and bright red and like these things that are just so unnatural looking and very not historic, um, I wanted to steer away from that look. Um, so I wanted to do something a little bit more natural looking um, that could still be maintained very easily as far as, you know, we would stain the cedar and that sort of thing. Um, so that those are kind of my thoughts on just the things that come off the top of my head and then about the awning itself. So I'm open to some questions or maybe you guys can fill me in too. Um, and then eventually I'd like to kind of talk about maybe how this committee could help business owners see a more clear picture of what your goals are um, so that that way we don't have these miscommunications or, oh, I did something, shoot, I wasn't supposed to do that and I really had no idea, right? Because I would never like intentionally do something that wasn't, wanted by a city committee so that's kind of where i'm coming from well, well jill I, I can start by saying that the committee is charged with carrying out the the provisions of the saint peter heritage preservation ordinance um so um, it falls in their purview to review any type of an exterior renovation um and then the 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 uh, kind of the, the guidelines um for making decisions are the secretary of interior standards for the renovation and rehabilitation of historic structures which this is a pretty voluminous uh, um, publication. Um, also then the National Register um, also puts out historic briefings and those might be two pages on awnings or two pages on lighting or two pages on doorways or, or any number of factors. And there's hundreds of those that are publicly available on the National Register site, um, as well as I believe they're in the National Archives. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I also should have had in my report that, that it was clear that, that when the authorization was to provide for the painting of the storefront, um, that uh, it was to include the window trim on the second floor. And I will come to Jill's defense in this case. And, and when we missed the meeting on the 4th, she thought she was going to be out painting on, on, uh, on the 5th. Or no, when we missed the meeting, the previous meeting, the regular meeting, in, in, uh, uh, it would have been... Uh, 
October. Um, and then we had to reschedule for the 4th of November. Jill thought there wouldn't be an opportunity to get any or get the paint on. Um, but there was, and in, in, in I do believe there was a single day where the, the limitations of the product and you're supposed to be able to maintain a certain temperature for 24 hours. So really there was a very, very, very narrow window to get what she did get done. Uh, and yeah, then I literally been spent 10 hours in one day just trying to bust through it and that's all I could get finished. So. Yep. And then it's been reported that the owners of the building, uh, Dr. Keith and Dr. Carolyn Stelter, may be looking at doing a second uh, floor renovation that might include new windows so um it, it probably is not uh capable of getting the second floor repainted until perhaps the spring um but then uh, perhaps the stelters will come in um i believe they're interested in that loan with the one half forgivability up to five thousand dollars which i hope then i'd perhaps be able to convince them to put in the original windows that meet the original opening so there wouldn't have to be that type of a trim. Um, and the Stelters have demonstrated in the past that they're good stewards of, of the historic properties. So um, I'm going to um, start opening up to questions of Jill or, or comments. Um, um, and I'll start with, with the chairman, Mr. Potts. Well, I, I guess I listened to what Jill just said and I, and I heard what you said about our mission and I guess I'd just say that there's um, we always face this conflict between the need to revitalize and use new materials and new design ideas and our our similar need to try to create a theme in downtown St. Peter uh, that is at least somewhat historically true. And the time span of that historical period is roughly from when the east side of uh, of Minnesota Avenue um, was rebuilt after the big fire of 1888, so about 1890, and when First National Bank was built in 1886. And so the late 1880s, early 90s, up until the 1920s or 30s, when um, architectural styles changed and people went to uh, different color brick and different style buildings and that kind of thing. This is an attempt, I've always thought, to create an atmosphere in St. Peter that was um, attractive to people coming into a small town. We've, we've often looked at Northfield with uh, uh, admiration for the way they've maintained their small town. Uh, atmosphere and um, we've um, we've tried to do that so at, at the same time <clears throat> we recognize that there were many changes made in the 1930s and 40s and 50s that were really not in accord with this and some of the the wooden structures hanging over doors <clears throat> were built in that period um, and we've been trying I know Russ has talked about this before but we've been trying to uh, when the opportunity presents itself with a new ownership or a, a new design to um, eliminate those wooden structures because they are, in fact, a, a later uh, alteration that doesn't fit in very well with plants. And so we have that the structure in front of the uh, Aero Hardware Store that uh, goes back to the 1960s, I think, or early 70s. Uh, before the commission existed or before the historic preservation district existed and and it, it would be wonderful to gradually as time goes on uh, avoid uh, remove those kinds of things because they don't fit that theme that historic theme and i you know i saw the front of the store and the and the canvas removed and i thought to myself well you know that's a stainless steel frame, and it could fit a nice canvas that would uh, say the name of the building of the of the business and uh, fit in very nicely. And but it seems to me that the the cedar uh, boards um, goes contrary to that to that notion. And uh, so that's the reservation I have about it. And I would have difficulty supporting uh, the design with the boards. So that's about what I have to say. Thank you, Chairman Potts. Um, I, next on my list, I have uh, um, Emily Bruflat. Hi, um, thank you. And Jill, thank you for being with us tonight. It was really 
good to hear your perspective and then Russ to hear the perspective of our you know the ordinances and the regulations behind all of this I'm personally very torn because goodness that cedar is beautiful and I think it would look very nice uh, personally and I I having just listened to Chairman Potts give some history it's nice to have that perspective just to understand like where the city is coming from and where you know that historic preservation comes into play that we want our businesses to be uniform um, in some ways um, that said I'm I'm still I'm still feeling pretty torn because I think that that cedar looks a lot nicer than the canvas awnings personally and that's an aesthetic opinion and not a historic opinion and I'll I'll make that distinction and um, I think that's that's my comment. Thank you, Emily. Jill, I'll note yep. that uh, Ms. Bruflat is the council, city council representative to the Heritage Preservation. So Emily's also serves on the city council. Um, next on my list, I have Brian Oviatt. Well, I think that uh, Russ, you and, and, and Larry summed it up very, very well. Um, that the use of the wooden, um, structures on the outside of these buildings uh, there is no examples uh, with the exception of, of some poorly applied examples uh, like uh, the old Willie's building and, and stuff like that and it it's a, it, it seems to draw away from the building and not keep the context uh, I understand that uh, you know awnings have always been there in one style or another they've always been a canvas awning and they don't always look like what we see today, I think the closest one may be the embassy bar um, for a, a historically accurate one. Um, but I think the fact that we uh, continue with the canvas over these frames, I think invokes the feel of the original design of the buildings. And when we when we apply the the wood, I don't think we're we're following the original intent of the building, and and it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but I don't think it follows the intent, and I think it draws away from it. So, um, I I certainly we would be against uh, the use of 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 wood on those awnings. Thank you, Brian. Um, next on my list, I've got uh, Terry Bergman. I just have to go with what the state ruled. I think that's the way to go. The old buildings used to have crank out canvas awnings if you go back and look at the old pictures. And the new canvas awnings are just an easier way. You don't have to crank them in and out. So I'm going with the state on it. Thank you, Terry. Yeah, yeah. The state would prefer that you had the, the mechanical awnings, you know, that did roll up and fold in and out, but um certainly i think we can get the appearance of that without the added cost um next on my list i've got member joe metzen that building used to have cedar shakes on it right that yeah. one did willie's bar and swedish contour did when i was hired yeah, well why was why was that okay to that predate the historic preservation ordinance oh, yeah certainly historic preservation i believe was 1988 and so that that's an application of the like Larry had said the the 50s, 60s, 70s, and I'm sure at their the time they were done, someone said it looks lovely, but I think it certainly does detract from the building. So yeah, anything else, Joe? Well, I just have to note that those cedar shakes they looked really pretty gross and moldy, you know, before they were removed. So that does seem to be a a problem with that kind of material and then i guess i'd also agree with mr bergman that the state historic architect has indicated that those aren't okay so yeah okay uh anything else joe no that's my comments okay um sharon you're the last on my list well i'm going to be throwing a ball of mud into all this because i think there's some really things we need to look at First of all, I've been down and looked at Jill's new store after I read my minutes, and I did some looking online at historical things, and one time they said there was such a thing as pounded tin awnings um, during that period. 
and I think we as a commission need to be a little bit open-minded about what is what is going to look good and give some dramatic appeal to the town. If we're going to start holding things, you know, being really um, stringent about this, we need to really get after the red awning and that yellow awning right almost right next door to Jill is hideous. I mean, that is the poorest excuse of anything that was allowed to go. And then we have the other side of the street with the old Scogmo building. Those are real those are real eyesores to the town. So talk about a distraction. Those are distractions. So, I think sure. this I what, what, I think those that? are I was going to ask you, what was that last building you referenced or some of us that the old, the old, the old, the old Skogmo building across the street with all the little offices in it. You know, I call it the Skogmo building. It's, I think it's, it was owned by the Johnson brothers at one time. The mall. Oh yeah. Oh. The mall. That is, those are real eyesores. I think the proposal that Jill has put before us, I think would be really pretty. And I think it would, for one thing, if you've got that ugly yellow awning and then she's supposed to put another awning, it isn't going to, it is not going to complement the city at all. It just makes the yellow awning even look worse. Where the, where the seat, where her plank awning, I think adds a richness to the town. I think that it's not going to detract from the historical effect. And I think, in fact, when I look at her other store, the way she's designed the outside of that store, it adds a little bit of charm. Um, to that part of town. So I would strongly suggest that we look beyond, just change our paradigms a little bit or else become very stringent with all the businesses downtown that are getting by with looking really bad. And I would cite again, Arrow Hard, the Ace Hardware with the red and that yellow ironing to me is atrocious. And then the, the mall building, those buildings really need to be pulled up to snuff. So I would really go in favor of allowing Jill to go forward. And I think, um, as you said, she was trying to get the painting done and that was impossible with that small window of time. And, and I believe that the idea that shelters will put in new windows, that would be great. But I would really like, like the commission to look a little bit beyond just our narrow paradigms when we look at this. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I can address mm -hmm. a, a couple of those matters. One is, is the ACE hardware and the red awning um, the ordinance does contemplate that they get to use the colors of their national franchise. Um, and so as Arrow Ace Red was the predominant color of, of their logo, they were allowed to use that on the, uh, on the, uh, on the awning. Um, as to the La Mexicana market and its bright yellow awning, um, yeah, yeah, one of the things I've always intended to do is try to develop some type of a color palette um, for the buildings based upon, you know, the period in which they were built. And certainly something more muted would have been perhaps more appropriate. Um, and, and, and I did agree, someone mentioned uh, the, the awning at the embassy. There's another one perhaps at Riley Tannis um, that, that has more of a pattern to it. So it's not a solid single color. Um, so I will try to um, find a, a uh, so material, and, and I'll probably rely on Chippo again then to get me, what is the appropriate yellow? What is the appropriate you know, green? Is it forest green? Is it Kelly green? Is it uh, you know, olive perhaps? Um, so um, I, I will make an attempt and, and a pledge to, to undertake a, a review of that. Um, I will ask just one time, that, does anyone have questions for Jill? Emily. Uh, yes, um, Jill. I was wondering about your your cedar awning and what what shade you would plan to stain it if you went that route. Um, I'd actually probably do just kind of a clear coat so that the cedar color would come out. Okay. Um, and I, at my own home, I used one that was like a stain and a sealer that was good for like 11 years or something like that. Um, and so far it's been good, but um, I kind of want to just get the richness of the cedar out. And to be honest, I kind of want to reiterate if I, is that okay if I say something as well? Certainly, yeah. Okay, um, just that it's, it's not even as much about allowing the cedar awning because I respect the integrity of keeping the historical value of the town. It's more about, like Sharon was stating, I think 
as a business owner, it's so frustrating when you see all of these other places that look terrible, Four Seasons in the Mall one is one of them. And I understand if things are grandfathered in, but then we have to keep that beauty and that integrity across the board. It can't be this up and down. And then, in my opinion, something that has a natural beauty like a cedar awning is then shot down because it doesn't fit into 1890s, which we're not in the 1890s. So we have to somehow have a flexibility in my opinion, I, and I, and it's not that I want to get in an argument about it at all. It's just maybe I hope that it can be seen the frustration that those of us that really want to create beauty and attraction as people are driving by and not attraction because there's a neon sign, but attraction because, wow, that looks super charming. That looks very interesting. Um, that draws their eye from a beauty perspective rather than a bright something perspective. Um, so that's what's where I guess my, yeah. And then the other thing that I wanted to bring up is as a new business owner, I honestly had no idea opening my store that I was supposed to, like I, like I was never right. Like you open a store, you make it look the best that you think you can. Obviously I wanna make it look nice. I wanna draw people into my store. Like that's the purpose. And I had no idea. And so um, if there's something that can be given, maybe, I guess I didn't, and maybe that was me being ignorant to it because I'm new to this, you know, but maybe I can just speak for the newbies that are trying to start business, trying to make our town flourish, that maybe there needs to be more of a clean cut um, direction. So we don't get to the point where like, oh, you did this wrong. Now we've got to backtrack when we've spent thousands or hundreds of dollars on something, you know? No, can I just Russ? can I can Russ I interject Larry. something here? Go ahead, Larry. Yeah, um, I'm I'm sorry, Jill, but you are pretty early in this process. I mean, you haven't erected anything, so it's not like we're telling you to tear something down. And the the uh, the law is and the requirements for the district are perfectly available to the public. You can go on the internet and find them. It's on the city website. This is not a secret that's being held on people. And no, I also I have to say, and I have to say that um, uh, uh, Sharon bringing this up, br bringing up evidence of how bad other businesses look is really not in any logical sense connected to the question at hand. The question is, what do we? What does the commission think is appropriate for the building that's in front of us and the pictures? Not what the Mexican place is doing or what the the massage parlor is doing. We those are separate issues. Lord knows we have tried to get the Johnson building, the the Four Seasons Mall or whatever it's called, the Five Governor. I don't even know what it's called anymore. To to clean that place up, we've tried really hard. The Historic Preservation Commission is not in the position of condemning property. Okay, we have to make that clear. That's the city's issue. If there's a building problem, that's the city's issue, not this commission. So it's a question of preserving the flavor of downtown uh, and still making changes that will appeal to people. Uh, and it's as simple as that, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, Can Larry. I respond to Larry? Can I respond uh, to Larry, please? Well, uh, Sharon, what I'd like to do is is go ahead, Sharon. Okay, I'm. My point is, Larry, I'm not trying to trash anything you've done or have done before, but I think it's the overall approach when you have a new business owner that's trying to do something with a little bit different slant, but not taking away from the beauty of the downtown. I mean. St. Peter is a ways away from being a historical monument, you know, like Northfield. But I think until we get more of those old buildings kind of up to shape, I don't think we can sort of make it impossible for somebody with a little bit of a new slant from doing something and see how it looks and see how it works. Hey, if, I could if, if, I, if I could respond to that, <laughs> certainly we have... We have plenty of evidence from the changes. Uh, remember the Swedish contour 
We have plenty mm-hmm. of evidence about those uh, wooden structures that hang over doors in downtown. And um, we had been hoping to move on, Sharon. So it's, it's mm-hmm. again, I, 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 yes, I love artistic ideas and I love the idea yeah. of new materials and things like that. Uh, but I think that we um, we have a different goal here a little bit. And I, I sort of don't like the idea that somehow we're discriminating against somebody who's just trying to get a foothold in business. Uh, Jill has been connected with this commission before, um, and that lighting issue over the front door of her place, um, you know, is still unresolved as far as I know. So uh, maybe there is a problem of misunderstanding our communications there. Uh, so uh, I've had my say now. I, I will, I'll, I'll address the Four Seasons building in, in um, about, well, previous council. Um, I had asked that they would consider adopting what's called a minimum maintenance of effort ordinance. That would give me the ability to go in and order certain repairs. Um, I can't go and order the Four Seasons Mall to make any repair on their building. I can't require that they add an ounce of paint. I can't re- add or require that they add a brick. Um, but if they make a proposal for an alteration like they had a couple of years back, which turned out to be unfinanceable, I believe, um, we can require that they follow a certain standard. Um, Northfield, or not Northfield, that Faribault um, has minimal maintenance of effort. And every spring they send out letters to building owners saying, fix that tear in your awning, replace that cracked window, uh, do tuck mm-hmm. pointing here. And they may send out 70 letters and then they have maybe three that are contested. But it's completely turned around in Faribault evidently and now building owners are, are saying, oh, thank you. I didn't know that. I didn't catch that. I didn't see that. Um, and great. so it does have support there now. Um, I will defend Jill too. She's not the first business owner that it had undertaken some efforts. And then I have to go in and say, no, 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 you can't do that. Um, it's frustrating for myself. I've been relying on the realtors and the business owners to inform their tenant of the obligations for their heritage preservation. But maybe I can work it in and something with finance. When they come hook up utilities it, and it has an address, it'll trigger a, a Otis to me or something. Um, but yeah, I wish we had a better way to communicate the needs of it other than relying on on the, uh, the, the business owner or building owner and the realtor. Because I think it might be counterproductive to what the realtor is trying to do is get an occupant if he says, well, you've got to jump through that hoop and this hoop and spend this money and that money. Um, they may say, well, I'm going to go down the street or I'm going to go outside the district. So um, there are some challenges. Um, and then, frankly, with my position, one hand being economic development, the other hand being preservation, which is enforcement. Um, it, 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 it is difficult at times, and, and sometimes it tears me apart. But um, th- I've been given a duty to, to undertake by the council, and, and I've been trying to do my best for almost the last 20 years to do that. So um, I'm going to go through one more time, um, starting with Emily. you have anything to add, Emily? Um, no, I think I've asked all of, uh, all of my questions. Thank you. Okay, Brian? Uh, no further comment. Um, Terry? No further comment. Joe? Nothing further. Sharon? No. Larry? I've said enough already. Thanks. Would (laughs) Would anyone be inclined to make a motion regarding the proposed installation? I'll make a motion, Terry. What is the motion, Terry? That we deny that it gets the cedar awning. Okay, we have a motion by Bergerman. Is there a second to that? Second, Potts. We have a second by Potts. Um, Now we have a motion and a seconded on the floor. Now I'll go through one very last time because it would be appropriate to give you an opportunity to comment on the motion. And I start with Brian in this instance. Uh, no comment. Go. No comment. That is the motion. I missed you, Terry. I, I, I slipped right by you. No comment. Okay, Sharon. 
Yeah, uh, my comment would be I stand by my original results. I mean, my comments. I really think we should give Jill the the authorization to go ahead with the wood. Thank you, Sharon. Um, Emily? Um, I would tend to agree with Sharon and no further comment. And Larry? No comment. Okay, at this time I will call the roll and I will start with, we have a motion to deny the installation of the cedar awning. Um, and I will start the roll call with member Bergman. Aye. Member Metzen. Aye. Member Latinsky. No. Member Potts. Aye. Member Bruflat. Nay. Member Oviat. Aye. I'm sorry, Jill. Um, I'll offer to work with you to, to try to find a, a, a sunbrella canvas awning or, or even consider no awning at all. Um, but I am, um, I'm sorry that uh, um, you couldn't be accommodated. Um, yeah, I have no further business on the agenda, no reports for this evening. Would anyone be inclined to move adjournment? I would so move. Thank you, Larry. I'll Is there second. a second? And a second by Bergman. Um, yep. Let me note that uh, um, if we do not meet in December, this is going to be Terry's last meeting. Um, Terry is oh. not taking the opportunity to re-up for another term. Um, and I, I hope I'm not out of school. Terry saying it's somewhat due to the, the frustration with the virtual formats and not being able to meet in person. But thank you for all your, your service, Terry. Greatly appreciate it. And, and like you and I were talking, thank you were always reliable and always in attendance. So. That's yes, crazy. Terry, thank, thank you so much. Uh, you were of great help over the last couple of years. I, I personally really appreciate your help. Uh, you, you were a steady member of the, of the group. I, I hope you'd reconsider joining again, re-upping. You know, the virus well, won't last them, forever. I, I know. I told them, I said, I'll keep my name on the book, but only if there's no virtual meetings. So I said, if you get to a spot that's something somebody wants, you know, if, say not this committee, but a different one, I'd be happy to be on them. But I just can't handle this. Sometimes the phone works. You get the right numbers. Sometimes it don't. I, feel I just don't like it. Well, well, thank you once again, Terry, for all your service. So um, we do have a sure motion. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. We do have a motion and a second to adjourn. I will say all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, you're going to be here all by yourself. But everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe, stay well, and, and uh, take care of your friends and family. Same to you, Ross. Yep. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Yep. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.